Somebody wanted to know about micropsia, which is C smaller, and macropsia, which is C bigger. So the image is smaller or the bigger image is bigger. The first and most important question is whether it's unilateral or bilateral. If it's unilateral, then that, of course that's going to be in your eye. If it's bilateral, it could be cerebral or it could be in both eyes, both eyes. And the way to differentiate the bilateral cerebral is the presence of the other symptoms, metamorphopsia. And one of the great things about ophthalmology and neurophthalmology is we can actually see the pathology when it's in the retina. And OCT can see even better than me, and therefore C plus OCT should be able to answer the question if it's retina or not. And if there's nothing in the eye, of course you're gonna go to the MRI. However, let's just talk about this unilateral micropsia or macropsia. So the photoreceptors, and these are the photoreceptors, they're like on the football field, you measure 10 yards to get a first down, and there's a, there's a stick that measures with a chain exactly 10 yards. So they bring the chains out onto the field and measure if the football has actually traveled exactly 10 yards. But if you have these two guys and you think it's 10 yards and you push them apart or push them together, then you'll think it's 10 yards when it's not 10 yards. And so if you have micropsia, micropsia, the photoreceptors are actually farther apart and therefore you think that's 10 yards because it's two photoreceptors there, but really it's 15 yards. And so it seems smaller to you. Mm -hmm. And if you push them together, you'll think that's 10 yards because there's a 10 yard chain there, but it's, it, it'll look bigger to you because it's not 10 yards, they're just closer together. Mm -hmm. And so you might be asking yourself right now, what would make the retinal photoreceptors get closer and farther? And the most common cause is epiretinal membrane. So there's a membrane there that's pulling them apart, or it's a contracting membrane that's pulling them together, or there's fluid in your macula, macular edema, or there's a subretinal neovascular membrane there, or there's something in your retina that is altering the photoreceptors. And so the movement of the photoreceptors, too close or too far, produces the symptom of unilateral or bilateral macropsia and micropsia, and if you don't see in the eye, if the OCT sees nothing in the eye, that's the person you're going to do an MRI on. It's super rare to have a cerebral micropsia and micropsia. You're going to do a visual field, make sure there's no homonymous hemianopsia because that's often occurring in the presence of these patients with cerebral causes. And so you need to know a little bit about micropsia and macropsia.